Alright well, guys, welcome to this tutorial. Um, this is going to actually be the last tutorial in our beginning program tutorial series. So I pretty much covered everything. Um, there are a th few more things that I would have covered. Probably I would have covered object-oriented programming, um, algorithms and stuff like that. But I think that's going to be more relevant when I start um, teaching you C and Java. But for now, uh, we don't need it. This is beginning programming. Um, you've already watched seven tutorials, hopefully, and this is this is gonna be the last tutorial. Um, please do take your time to watch this. And as an advice, if you've been following along, um, you know the whole series, please do um, actually watch it one more time and make sure you understand everything before you actually start um, watching my C tutorials, which I'll start um, posting very soon. Um, because it's really important that you understand everything in these um, in these tutorials, otherwise you're going to fall behind. Okay, so to talk about debugging, um, first is I'm going to explain to you the life cycle of a program, right? So I'm just going to do it very simply. So first of all, you have an idea, right? So you have an idea for a program, right? So you're like, okay, I want to make this program. Then what do you do? You do a bit of research you might even design if you're an experienced programmer you design once you've done that so you research about you know how you're gonna make that program and then you start doing design and work then you actually write the code <coughs> once you write the code you compile the code so the compile way does it takes your code and it turns it into machine code because obviously the computer needs to understand what you've written and computers only understand zeros and ones, right? And that's essentially machine code. So what this compiler does in between takes this code here and then turns it into machine code so that the computer can understand, right? The computer can understand. Um, once you've done that, you can run the program. You run the program and the program runs on your computer. This is my program. Yep. Okay. So there's a few steps there. So first of all, you have an idea about a program you want to make. You research and you design about the pro you know, research, you do some design work, you you write the program, you write the code for the program, you compile it so that it runs on the computer. Now debugging is is essentially um a bug in your program is essentially a problem in your program. So when a person tells you that there's something wrong with the program or a programmer tells you that, no one won't say, Oh, there's a problem in my program, they say my program has a bug, that's what they'll say, which basically means that, you know, there's something wrong in my program, um, and it could be any one of three things, all right? The first thing it could be, it could be, it could be a syntax error. So again, a bug is a problem in your program. If you ask a programmer, uh, if a programmer has a bug in their program, they will tell you, yes, I have a bug. Now, if a programmer has a problem in their program, which stops the program from working properly, then they'll normally say to you, my program has a bug. So there's three types of errors, errors or bugs that you can get in your program. There's a syntax error. Now syntax error essentially means, you know the code that you write, so you know what, I want to rub all of this out, to make this easier. So the first one, again, is a syntax error. And a syntax error essentially means, you know the code that you write, for your program somewhere in there one line of your code it's wrong it's you know in, it's not in accordance with the language you're writing so as an example if you have Java and Java says oh for you to um, for you to print out a new line you have to write system dot out dot print ln and then you write what you want to print out in between the braces with the I mean, end of the semicolon. And then what you decide to do is you, what um, you've done this by mistake. You instead of writing system, you write sit. You you never wrote the y and the s. You wrote sitem instead or something. That just because you know it's a syntax error. You just made a little error. You didn't notice it, and you just wrote sitem dot out dot print ln. Now what that is, that's a syntax error. Java, the compiler, Java's compiler is going to recognize that and say, okay, no, we can't compile that because that's not a valid command. Sitem is not valid. 
And then what you have to do is you have to look at and say, okay, now I forgot the Y and the S. You put the Y and the S and it becomes system dot R and then your program will compile. But that's what a syntax error is. When there's a problem with the syntax, syntax is basically your code. When there's a problem in, um, with your code in the program, if you've written something incorrectly, maybe if you've misspelled a word or you've misspelled some characters or, you know, you haven't followed, um, um, or you haven't... Um, um, yeah, you've missed out some word characters or um, some other um, syntax that you need to compile your program. So that's what a syntax error is. So that's one type of bug you can get in your program. Um, that's, these are the ones that are really nice. You can get a syntax error, you're like, yes, it's very easy to debug because most often, you know, you know when you code, you have, I'm not sure, I'm pretty sure I've explained this in the past, you have an IDE. An IDE is basically an integrated development environment. So what you can do, you can write your code, and you can also run your code at the same time. That's a little play button. So once you click the play button, you can run your code as well. And what these IDs are really good at doing is they're really good at finding bugs in your program. So if you write a syntax error, say for example you wrote a syntax, there was a syntax error right here in your program in this line, yeah. What would what IDs often do is they say, okay, you know, there's a problem with your code in line one, or something like that. And then you can actually go to that line and you'll be able to spot that syntax error straight away. And that's why syntax errors are really nice to, they're really easy to debug because, you know, uh, on top of the fact that they're very simple errors, the ID makes it even easier for you by pointing out, you know, in which line did that error occur. So that they're really, really easy to debug. And, they, you know, if you want errors, these are the ones that you want. If you're going to have errors, these are the ones you want. Okay, so the second type is, um, is one time. Okay, these are all right. Then they're all right, but um, essentially, in your program, the every the syntax is fine, right? So the syntax is fine in your program, and when you run your program, you know your program runs fine. But what happens? The pro the error doesn't occur here. You know, with a um, you know with a syntax error, your error is here. Your error doesn't occur here with your syntax error. Your error occurs when you run the program. So that's why it's called runtime. It's during the runtime. Okay. Uh, during the runtime of a program, when your program is running, when something happens here, that's when you you get um, that's when your program crashes or an error occurs. And um, this can occur if, for example, say my program asks the user to enter a value a value between I don't know, um, if you enter their age or something like that. Yeah. And obviously you can't have a negative age or something. Um, if you program it such that in here you can't have your, you can't have a negative age, and then your user go uh, types in a negative age like minus ten, what will happen? The program will crash. The program is going to crash. The only way you can come around this is in your program you write some extra code to say, okay, in the case that the user enters minus ten or any negative number, I'm going to do this. But if you don't write that piece of code there, and you just rely on the user, you know. Uh, you just rely on the user to enter something, uh, it, not to enter a minus number. Um, most often, a error will occur, and this is just one example. You have many other examples by which runtime errors can occur. Again, these are fairly trivial. They're you know they're simple to debug. You know, eventually you find out where it is. Um, but um, yeah, they're not really difficult. They can be annoying at times, but in general, they're all right. Um, yeah, you can just, you can easily find out where the runtime is. You know, when you well, as an example, like imagine you, you know your program runs. And something pops up. There's a pop-up that says, okay, enter your age. You type in minus 10, you click OK, and then the program crashes. You know, okay, it's something that happened when I clicked that OK button and when I entered minus 10. You know, it's something to do with that. So already you've narrowed down the problem and you know sort of where the problem is. So again, they're really trivial and they're really easy to debug. So they're actually all right. So those are runtime errors. <clears throat> the hardest type of error to debug from experience, and most programs will tell you, is is what's known as a logical error. You know when you have a problem, right? You have a problem, and when it's a big problem, I want to put brackets big. The best way you solve a problem is to is to break down the problem into smaller steps. So you, you break down it into like step one, step two, step three. So you keep breaking them down to smaller steps. And that way, once you, you know, solve these individual steps, You've, you will eventually solve the whole problem, right? Now, what happens, you know, to solve these steps, you have to think of a logical way of doing so. You know, a problem, you have to think of... That's why you think of problems logically. Um, 
because that way you can solve one of the, each one of these steps one by one and you know that you know if you've done each, if you've solved each step correctly then you've essentially solved the whole problem but what can happen is sometimes in one of these steps you can make a problem you can make an error so when you're writing your code you have the code for step one code for step two code for step three code for step four and if you imagine you have a lot of code a lot yeah a lot of lines of code and you know you're 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 solving your problem and then you don't notice it but you can sometimes make a logical error you can sometimes like you're supposed to do something or more than 10 times but you ended up doing it only 10 or something like that but you don't notice it it's, it's, it's a logical error these are very difficult to debug because these really require you to step through your code this is where debugging really um, this is the heart of debugging is when you have an IDE and what these what this ID allows you to do is it allows you to um, you, most often you have a debug menu on the top, and you click the debug menu and it allows you to step through one, each line of code one by one, and you can see what your program's doing, which is pretty amazing. You can sort of see okay, when I, when what this line gets executed, this is what happens. These are the values of the variables or whatnot. Whatever you've done in your program, it told you okay, once this line executes, this this is the change that's made. And you can do that one by one, and then eventually, you know, as you're stepping through your program, stepping is the key word here, as you're stepping through the program, eventually you notice a line with, you notice a result that um, comes from one of these lines, and you sort of say, okay, that's wrong, it shouldn't be doing that. Then you've narrowed down the problem. But logical errors are very difficult because, you know, sometimes when you have a lot of code and you have to look through it, you have to basically identify an error you made, a logical error you made, and that can be difficult at times. Sometimes you won't be able to tell. Um, sometimes you won't be able to find it, it might take a long time and from experience yeah, it does take a long time sometimes you know you do make logical errors and you sort of say oh it's a program so it's not my fault but essentially it's down to your own logic and it's down to your it's essentially your fault but it's all right i mean um it happens uh, it make it happens um and you do learn from it and it's good that it happens because you become a better programmer the more mistakes you make the better your program you are um, but these are the hardest type of errors, logical errors, and most often people debug their programs. You know, the IDE, they have facilities to allow you to step through your program to actually see what each line of code is doing um, as it's being run. And that's really key in being able to identify the logical error that you made. So, yeah, so sorry about that. That's a quite a long tutorial, a lot to take in. So, just to quickly sum up, um, debugging. Um, so we debug a program, aka in other words, we try and find a way of removing the bugs from a program. So we deep that's so debugging essentially means. All right, so we have a syntax error, a runtime error, and then we have a um, logical error. These are all the type of errors you have have in your program. These are the most difficult. Um, this is not so difficult and this is pretty easy so it goes you know so yeah all right so um my c program tutorials will be coming soon please do visit the website it's pcb 0 xnet okay and there you'll find a lot of posts you'll find relevant information news which is really important um and yeah the c program tutorials will come soon Please do watch through the series if you haven't understood everything. And yeah, um, look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks again. Bye.